YouTube world. I'm back. It's another early morning, just after 7am. Um, what am I doing today? This is the painting I did yesterday and it's it's just so hot in here, it's completely dry. A few problem areas here, a little bit of splitting that I'll need to fix, but nothing that nothing that I can't sort out. So the intention is is to put something over something really bright and red over the top of this. I'm still thinking about it. I'm thinking about the kite. So you will see the finished painting of this one before you see this one. I'm kind of ahead of myself in recording. But what I want to achieve today, obviously I have a lot of leftover paints in my cups and because it's so hot, I just want to use them up. But this is going to be an interesting experiment because I, and I do tend to work in twos or threes. <laughs> I want to be, I want to take this and I want to adjust a few things. First of all, um, I want to bring the horizon down, line down, just a little. Second, I want to mix the blues and greens up just a little bit more. And I'm going to do a different technique. I'll show you in a sec. This I'm quite happy with, although I don't, second time round, I think I'll be uh, a lot looser. And that's, that's the aim of this painting, is to be a lot looser than this. So when you approach a painting, it's a bit, do you know, it's a bit like riding a bike. If you haven't gotten a bike for a while, you need a bit of practice and you need, you need a warm up. Let's say it's a bit like going to the gym. You need to warm up first. And what I wish I'd done, and I couldn't because it's too hot, is to do this straight after I did, did this one because you warm up, you feel looser. And do, do you know what? I really do think it does, it does relate to your painting that does come across in your painting um if you're tight if you're hesitant um it, it will come across in your painting so if you feel like that just get a little canvas and do a test or just do a straight pull or just do something to get yourself going that's why when we do commissions always do tests if you know more than one to make sure we know when we come to do the actual painting that we know we're really uh, in the flow so to speak <laughs> so i'm going to put this to one side so it doesn't get any paint on it actually i'm just going to mark where my horizon line wants to be so there's that one and i'm going to come down to around about there Maybe there. Yeah. Right. I have my base here. And I'm going to... Last time, I did a base just at the top for the sky. I'm not going to do that this time. In fact, I'm just wondering why I just did that, because that line, because I'm going to cover the whole lot in white. Uh, or am I? Oh, it's too early in the morning. Hmm. Right, here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to change the sky.
there's my sky. Now, I was a long time tilting. I tilt the life out of it. That paint's not moving. Um, now, beginning to tilt, not just one way. Definitely, um, I'm not, I don't tilt that way <laughs> or down. But I do tend to tilt one way predominantly. Then I go back the other way because it, what it does is just create some lovely uh, movement in, in the clouds, which is what I want. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, it's been, well, it's now five past eight, so it's been a good 40, 40 minutes. And it's already beginning to dry at the edges. So I've really got to get this base done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base of white emulsion down just through through the middle section. Um, then I'm going to do layer a cup up, a couple of cups, and I'm, I'm just going to do like a little bit of a ribbon pour because that's for how I would normally do my seascapes. <laughs> I love the way the paint's picked up that blue. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to drop my horizon line to keep that bit. So I lay my paints out. I don't think you can see actually um, in the order that I want to lay them into my cup. Little tips. I'm going for the darkest, not the darkest, the most desaturated at the top, and the most vivid towards the bottom.
So I've got some splitting here already, but I know it's not, it's something that I can, I can fix. See how it dries. Hello. So I'm back with the dried results. There's two paintings here and there's a third painting, which I um, only recorded as um, a, a quick time lapse, which was for TikTok because really you, you get the gist of it from watching watching two, uh, two, two videos, um, too much of the same thing. Obviously I've dropped the horizon line on this one, which I think probably is far better than these. However, um, the only thing I've done with a brush is straighten all three horizon lines and obviously added in some surf and there was a couple, there was a, quite a lot of splitting on this one. I just used old paint and on this one I used colour shift. Um, a lot of colour shift paint which I, I, I didn't use on these, which I do tend to use in seascapes. And this one, I didn't do any balloon rolls, I only used a little mini blower to um, blow, blow the paint out. I'm just cleaning a brush off camera here. And I used my old, really old manky um, fan brush to add some surf, etc. To bring a lot of movement. Movement is really important in seascapes especially with what I am about to do over the top. I don't know if you can see, but loosely I've drawn a kite. I haven't done it on this one yet. I'm not quite sure where to place it, but I'll come to that in a minute. So my inspiration for these, if you watch my first video, this is part three, is this painting here called Spray. And in the last two videos, I've shown you how I've mixed up my colors, how I've desaturated my colors, um, how I've tried to bring elements of this into my own style um, and even um, the sky in this one is, is you know the same kind of colour theme as her swimming cap there. So the thing and I explained before the thing that really for me makes this painting is this red swimming costume. Now I'm not going to paint her <laughs> That would just look terrible and I can't copy. So what I'm going to do is draw a kite in red. I'm going to mix up the colours in a minute, but you can see what well, we're calling that red. It's not really red. It's kind of a burnt orange. So which red do you go for? Now, I hope that's in shot had this for a while. I've done this with several colours, not, not for paint pouring, not for fluid art, just for normal uh, painting with a brush when I use limited colour palettes. So you need to know what your reds are, what bases, what hue, you know, your red will be. You could go for a pink hue, which would be your magenta. And then you could go for a cadmium hue, which is more orangey, crimson, crimson, Illyrian crimson. This is permanent Illyrian crimson. And even then you can see the difference. And also I know which is transparent, which is opaque, etc., just by brush marks. And here you can see the difference between, I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos, raw umber and burnt umber, which I use a lot of for underpaintings. So burnt umber, is, as you can see, it's a lot warmer. Raw umber is a lot cooler. So how do I decide what red to use for to represent this swimming costume in my kite? And I can see straight away, I, I could go for cadmium red because it's got an orangey undertone, but I probably have to do quite a lot of work to desaturate it and get it close to this colour. However, if I look at my red iron oxide, that 
that is pr that is pretty darn close to to the darkest shades I've got there. Um, so I have my red iron oxide here. This is professional acrylic, Winsor and Newton, heavy bodied. You know, you can if you've got these, uh, you use these for fluid dark, absolutely fine. But I would absolutely recommend a more professional a heavy body paint for any kind of embellishment because i mean this is a transparent paint that's a bad example but honestly you need something that's a little bit more robust um, and really highly pigmented to to make your embellishments come to life so i'm going to mix this color up um no. I have some phthalo green here, yellow shade by Golden. I'm just going to put that on the side just in case I need it, need it for a bit more desaturation. Don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm going to leave a good section of that as exactly as it is. And I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to make it lighter. Now, how am I going to make it lighter? I could add white, but I think I'm going to add a bit of yellow. So I've got some, um, this is cad yellow medium. And I'm going to take a little bit. start to mix it in. Nothing much happening. A bit more. And you can see how creamy this paint is. I'm going to take all of that. So always start off with small amounts and then gradually increase when you're mixing colours. So I'm going a little bit warmer. Start to see the difference, but probably not enough. So let's really go for it. I'm probably going to leave that as it is, but take some more off. Just mix it into that yellow to really have a lighter version. Now, I just want to show you. And I mix in some of my phthalo green. Oh, might have gone too far there. <laughs> I'm darkening it. So I'm not adding black. I've got a lovely dark shade of that crimson. In fact, I'm going to go a bit more. So there we have my shades of crimson, sorry, red iron oxide, it's not crimson. <laughs> so I've got all three canvases on the easel together. It's very difficult to set up the right camera angle actually for this. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to work on them all together and I'm going to use palette knives because 
Although I've got a, I haven't got realistic images. They're, they're graphic, is fluid art. I don't want to put anything um, realistic on top. To me, the two fight together. And you may say, well, you've done landscapes previously, but it's because there is a certain amount of realism in the skies and there is here. But my brushwork is very much impressionistic. It's very loose. It's not, um, it's not really tight. I've worked really hard in loosening my style up. So I've got my colours here and I just have in my mind, I don't know if it's going to work or not, um, to pick up these colours and literally put them on with a palette knife. Really thick. That's probably a bit too big. But we're just going to see how it goes. See how we get on. It will be a time lapse. We have the finished results. Get a bit closer. I did um, did quite a lot. <coughs> excuse me, quite a lot of work on the uh, kites off camera. Sometimes you can feel the pressure of um, the camera running in the background. But I really I love this one. I love that flash of blue in there. I wanted to create some real depth and movement in the kites. Not quite sure if I've succeeded, but it just takes practice. This one, I love the movement down here. I love the little wave there. And this one has to be my favorite, which I didn't really record, but I did, but just as a time lapse. Just a little bit of brushwork to add that highlight in there afterwards and some stippling effects and that was with mini blower love that sky there so this painting has inspired me to do a big one big <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this little series i hope you've learnt lots thanks for watching